Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 977th for the 27th of October. And uh, the the Ukrainian uh, collapse continue um, uh, over the, in the Donetsk region and the uh, Ukrainians still continue to concentrate on Kursk despite the rest of the front line is going to hell. And uh, yeah, so, and uh, there are some claims of capture, so no pretty significant update uh, so today. So uh, we're going to go down... Uh, anti-clockwise direction uh, as usual because we want to cover the Donetsk front first. So over at the uh, Kherson front or the Kherson front, Russian forces are shelling Lvov, Tokarevka and Antonevka. There is fighting reported in the Pridiniprovsky direction but uh, uh, by this point I'm not even sure if it's actually this direction at all or they're just talking about the entire front line. So anyway that's all for the Kherson front. The, over at the Zaporizhia front, we have some fighting being reported, uh, prim primarily over in the Zeribyanki as well as uh, towards Novo Denilivka. So, but otherwise, uh, I don't think this this is uh, much things. This is just a skirmishes. That's all from Zaporizhia uh, front. Over in the Donetsk front. So at the Donetsk front, over at the Velika Novo Silka uh, sector, there's fighting reported at uh, Makarivka and towards. Uh, Otoberske or Blachodatne. So in this area here. Uh I believe I have kept I have mentioned this. I'm leaving this uh pink because I'm I needed this to do frontline changes report later. Uh maybe in a eight to twelve hours time. So uh but this I already covered the Russian uh, Russian forces have captured uh Levatne based on information coming from the Ukrainian um uh sources. So oh, moving over to the this main front line. Over at the Shetaske Novo Ukrenka region, uh, the latest update have uh this is based on the mapping. This based this based on Russian claim, and uh, this area here is based on Deep State UA, which is confirmed now. So, uh, Russians claim that they have captured most of Shetaske. Uh, Ukrainian mapping have only admitted that they have uh, the Russian forces have entered it. Uh, but uh, the Ukrainian mapping did show that uh, the Russian forces have captured uh, all the grounds uh, between Novo Ukrenka and Shataske towards the southern part and there is geolocation to confirm it and uh, Ukrainian mapping have shown that the Russians have captured at least a quarter of no Novo Ukrenka already. The speed of the advance suggests that uh, there is actually no, uh, not very very few resistance uh, in this area here. As you can see, let's say I zoom in here, you can see that most of Shataske has been captured. In fact, by this point, most likely this area is already captured. Uh, this entire town has been captured by the Russian forces because this firm, uh, this is Russian claim. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine the Ukrainians are able to hold a position. And uh, this is based on uh, Deep State US mapping. The Ukrainians claim that at least a quarter has been captured of Novo Ukrenka. And if this is the case, uh, the only likelihood, I believe, at this moment is the Ukrainians holding the other side of the river. There's a water body here. Ukrainians holding the northern side. I believe this southern part, I think the Ukrainians will not be able to hold. They will try to redraw towards the north. And this could still potentially be something that they can defend. But uh, but given the tide of war, the speed of the Russian advance, uh, and the, the, the seemingly unwilling, unwillingness to stand and fight, uh, I think the Ukrainians will just withdraw from Novo Ukraine. However, this does not mean that the Ukrainians are not hitting back. They are still using drones, maybe artilleries, uh, but their, their ground troops are just not holding the holding the line because uh, they, they cannot fight the armored rush. The Russians are using a mechanized attack, so the, the Ukrainians are, cannot, hold, cannot hold a position. I think they may have severe lack of heavy equipment to deal with the Russian attack. So... At the situation at Novo Ukraine, uh, Novo, I'm sorry, Bohov Yevlenka, the latest update uh, have shown that the Deep State UA, the pro Ukrainian source, have claimed that most of Bohov Yevlenka has been captured uh, as the Russian forces continue to advance northward, uh, leaving just a little bit of Bohov Yevlenka left. But most likely, similar situation as Shataske, I think this town is already caught. I think it's already captured by the Russian forces. We are now simply just waiting for information to corroborate this. Uh, projection of uh, this area has been captured. Uh, that is very hard to imagine this not captured unless the Ukrainians want to put you no know, put a stand here in the you know on this very big forest, um, which is, I believe it is just a plantation. This is like a tree plantation. I'm not sure. I I can't tell from here. Um, yeah, but anyway, this 
this is the Boho Fiavlanka situation. So you can so in the strategic sense, uh, in this area, Russian forces are attacking these three settlements all at the same time, and at, and almost going to be capturing all of them all at the same time as well. This is unimaginable just even a month ago. Uh, so yeah, so cursed. And uh, over in the in the sector of the Konstantinivka region, the Russian forces are still fighting in the region of Konstantinivka towards Antonivka. They are fighting in Katerinivka. Uh, although maybe the Ukrainians are putting up a good defense around here, there is not much frontline changes around Katerinivka itself. Uh, partly, of course, this is a chain of settlements. It's, it's easier to reinforce without exposing themselves. Uh, and then, uh, new geolocation of Russian forces and based on a uh, Ukrainian mapping. Uh, this is Ukraine. Uh, this Rybars mapping. So this uh, pro-Russian source mapping, the, but there is a dual location to it. Uh, Russian forces is now closing in on, uh, Yele Zavetivka. So uh, this this attack, this battle of Ye uh, Yele Zavetivka is going to come very very soon. So this sector over here, uh, yeah, is going to also go up in flames. Uh, very very soon. So this is the current situation across here. There's some weird reports from the Russian Defense Ministry. Maybe this is just Shaolin. So they mentioned Uspenovka. Also Uspenovka. I think this is just Shaolin. So I should change this to Shaolin. Shaolin. There's a Shaolin temple built over here. So uh, and then we move on to uh, the Korakove sector. The Korakove sector fighting is reported in the area of Korakove as well as in Massimilianivka. So uh, that's all. Uh, no no frontline changes being reported here. Then we go to another hellhole, uh, which is the herning all the way to the Pokrov region where there's also a lot of frontline change, particularly over the Seridove region and Hernik region. And the Hernik region, um, there is a uh, fighting being reported uh, over in Novo uh, Seridivka. Uz Uzmelivka, Koenig, and uh, Zeleny Druhi. But of significance, Ukrainian mapping have basically mapped that Koenig is now fully under Russian control. The Russian forces have captured Koenig very suddenly. Uh, it's like in, in the space of 24 hours, the Russians just march, walk through the entire city. There's no one there. It's seemingly like this. And the Russian Defense Ministry also mentioned that they have uh, they have announced the capture of Uzmelivka. Uh, Izmelivka, this is uh, announced by the Russian Defense Ministry. The Ukrainian mapping basically mapped that Hernik has fallen and basically Zelene Druhi is fully secured at this moment. Fight. So the this entire front line has collapsed, like collapsed. And, and I did mention and analyze this area before on the vulnerability of this area here. So I'm, I'm not, it's not a surprise that uh, the Ukrainians uh, have to start to abandon the position that the, there is not a lot of retreat route uh, in this area here. So they have to start to move on quickly. And I believe that we're going to see the fall of Kurakivka very, very soon because, yeah, they just abandoned Hernik. There is no not much fighting. Uh, if, if you're talking about so much land being captured in the span of 24 hours. So that's all. Uh, over in the uh, further up north around the Nova Selidivka region, as mentioned, the fighting is reported here. There is also fighting reported at Kremina Bauka. And Joe location of Russian forces uh, near Kremina's Balka uh, is moving towards uh, Vosnesenka. So this is the Sukarine region. And we move on to the Selidove region. So Selidove, uh, I can't even zoom in because it's such a big place. So we're going to cut this half into half first. So we talk about Vishneve. Russian forces planted a flag in the, in the village. However, uh, the problem with the footage is that there is actually no soldiers seen. It's just a flag on the on top of the roof, and this is suspicious uh, because the the Russians nowadays are known to put flags with drones. So I I'm not super convinced, but the Russian mapping Ryba uh, still map this map as uh they claim that the, this area is captured. However, because of because I cannot f confidently say that this is a firm evidence of Russian presence, uh this is just going to be a Russian claim. So so which is why. Uh, this 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 geo location of uh, the flag does not go to uh, change front lines, so otherwise the U the Ukrainian mapping have reported crazy changes. So in the so other than this Russian claim, uh, geo location that that seems to uh, suggest Russian forces in the south of Vishneve, uh, Ukrainian mapping have shown that the entire south of Vishneve is now firmly under Russian control, as the Russians is now heading towards 
Novo Alexievka. So this is yet another front line that is collapsed. Like there is totally not much fighting per se. It's like it's collapsed. The the Russians are just pushing forward. So and we're talking about like this this doesn't look very far, but it's actually pretty far. It's like 1.7 kilometers. It's, it's actually pretty far for active front line. So 1.2 uh, 1.2, 1.3 kilometers uh, just for that tree line. So so even though it, it doesn't look like a lot, but it's actually a lot. Like for a, even for a single day of capture, this is actually a lot. Uh, in the in the front line where the Ukrainians pr are present, they are fighting. Just that, uh, the front line have basically collapsed. The Ukrainians are on the tactical retreat. So, yeah, this is quite a lot of grounds. And then we have the Selidove. Uh, yeah, where the shit is everywhere. So um, the as I mentioned before, Selidove is undefendable there is actually no way there's only one route out and uh, this because of this there's only one route out the ukrainians have abandoned the uh the, the city as i have encouraged them to do because uh, there is just no way uh you you can stay and fight without getting encircled so ukrainians basically have abandoned the the, the city and uh, based on the mapping uh this 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 northern part is by uh the russian claims this entire big chunk here, which is 6.85 square kilometers uh, with the circumference of 16.5 kilo, uh, kilometers is mapped by the Ukrainian side. The Ukraine, so basically, this is confirmed. The Russian forces at least confirmed to have captured the entire southern half of Selidove. Entire southern half of Selidove is confirmed under Russian control. The entire eastern half to the northeast, northeast is also confirmed to be under Russian control. And the Russians claim that the entire northern part is have taken by the Russians as well. And leaving this area here, clearly this is uh, only the screening forces left, I believe, at most, at this moment of time where all this mapping has came out. Uh, where the, the, where the, the, the most, uh, where the soldiers are you know, uh, facilitating the tactical retreat. And um, so most of the Ukrainian troops is probably going to re be retreating from this area here uh, as we speak. If not, uh, the, I think the evacuation has already complete because there's no way uh, Selidove can be defended. It's just undefendable as the Russians could potentially just pincer and close off the retreat route. So, uh, so Ukrainians do the right thing and the Russians deliberately left one road out for them. So this is the Selidove situation. Unbelievable, uh, no tactical movement from the Russian side. Uh, basically, in the, in the, this, the, this pincer, you no know, this closing you know, you can see basically it's a hand um basically forced the ukrainians squeezing them out of selidove and uh, yeah this is uh this is how it is and uh selidove i believe within the next 24 hours to 48 hours we're gonna see the capture confirmed uh at selidove uh further up north in the pokrov sector at the pokrov front uh russian forces are fighting at promin and krutia fighting is also mentioned at mario lubivka and that's about it. This this front becomes really quiet after some initial, you know, uh, false flag uh, about, you know, uh, seemingly, you know, the Russians are going to push for Pokrov or Menorat. Suddenly, they actually focus on the Herning and the Seredove region. So, yeah. So, I believe this there is a massive big arrow movement currently happening. Um, this is happening. This is happening. I think the target is uh, Constantinople and Andreevka. This is a massive, massive uh, pincer, uh, the big arrow movement that is currently happening. So I believe this is what uh, we are witnessing right now. So, uh, in so instead of the Russians going for Pokrov, uh, they are going for this. This is what I think is currently happening. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about it in a in the in the future video where I can do analysis on this. So over in the New York front, there is mention of Zoria uh, by by Russian Defense Ministry. I think it's Shaolin. I just changed this to Shaolin because uh, when I was mapping, I thought this is was this was like you know the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So change to another Shaolin temple being built here. Shaolin reported there and Zoria. So uh, along the New York front, the fighting is reported across the front line at uh, Olesentropil, Sukabalka, New York. Uh, Skabinevka, Thorax, uh, Pivnishne, as well as Druzba. So most of this information is coming from the Ukrainian side. The Russians did mention a few, uh, particularly over in the Sukabalka or Lysentropia region. So uh, tentatively, this looks pretty big, but um, it seems like this is not the main push at this moment. But 
who knows the Russians may actually you know step on the gas on this place. So moving into the Bakhmut front, uh, Russian uh, there's fighting reported Andreevka, Babilohora, Pitashne, and Chasifia. I don't think this is a major offensive. This is probably just skirmishes. And uh, moving to the northern half of Bakhmut front, fighting is reported at Orikovo, Vasilevka, and Zaliniansky. So, uh, but definitely there is this uptick of actions uh, in this area here. Uh, will this become a major offensive? Uh, I doubt so at this moment uh, because uh, you can see the defense line around here is stupid. So there's no reason to risk your troops in this way uh, because you can just hit, the, hit, hit through and go through the soft underbelly and eventually force a major redraw of the Ukrainian forces to abandon the entire Slovenian Kramatorsk region because yeah, if the Russians continue to push through, it, yeah, why why defend this area? So uh, over at the Sivers front, uh, at the Sivers front, there is fighting. Uh, okay, there is nothing over here actually. Uh, let's look at Serbianka and Khorekhorevka as part of the Kremlin front. And uh, the Russian Defense Ministry shout. Uh, yeah, when why, when I was mapping this, I, I keep thinking this is Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Shelling is reported at uh, Staro Dubivka. So this this happened, and now uh, over in the criminal front, fighting is reported at Terni, Zarishne, uh, through the Serbianske forestry, Khorkhorivka, and Serbianka. So uh, tentatively, it seems like the 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 battle for Serbia uh the Serbianske forestry is uh ramping up. I think uh of course, but it is a forest. So the the problem with forest is that it's very hard to see the front line. So let's see how this goes. Uh, moving into the Svetovic front. At the Svetovic front, uh, we have, uh, I don't know how to fit all of this in. Okay, in the southern part, we ha uh, in, we have fighting reported at Mekievka towards Novo Mihailivka, over at Novo Yehorivka and towards uh, Chenishkina. So, uh, so that's the situation. Uh, I don't think much of this area, uh, probably skirmishes. And uh, over in the northern half of uh, Svetovic front, there is fighting reported Vishneve and Peshotrafneve. This attack here is actually moving towards uh, Borova, uh, which is one of the you no know, targets. Uh, but this is going to be a pretty far away. Uh, so over, uh, over at the Pishchane front, Russian forces have secured the the flanks of uh, Stemekivka. Over in the south of Berestove, the Russians are fighting Berestove, Pishchane, towards Lozova. Uh, Zarizove, uh, there is still fighting reported here this time round. That is reported by both Russian and Ukrainian Defense Ministry, confirming that the Russians are pushing south of Kurlyakivka. Geolocation location of Russian forces reaching the road. Uh, uh, I should use another color. Uh, reaching the road at uh, Kurlyakivka, uh, suggesting some advances. I will zoom in later. And uh, fighting is reported Kurlyakivka and towards Novo Osinove. So you can see the how this is how intense the Pishani offensive is. So very very crazy uh sector around here. So uh, Stemakivka, as you can see, uh, the Russian forces basically this map by the Ukrainian side securing Stemakivka with all the forest line off taken, uh in the northwest. Uh, over at the Kulia Kivka, Russian forces has been geolocated on the on the highway from the bridge, uh confirming Russians have taken part of the forest as they continue to push south from the village and uh, which means that this road cannot be used now the ukrainians can only use this road uh, this small road which is uh probably not advisable i think it's a health hazard so um i think the russians are on the verge of controlling at least one end of the bridge right now and and i think the russians will continue to push south uh from kulia kivka which is probably the case which is why we have the reports of fighting over at zarizove so and I can't, I can't really tell where the the line start and end for the for the town. Maybe it's this highway. So anything south is Zarizove. Everything north is a Kulia Kivka. Probably that's what, what it is. So uh, the situation here is uh, horrible. And the uh, geolocation of Russian forces entering Kolesnikivka is also confirmed. Uh, so the Russians have entered into Kolesnikivka. There is a river over here. Uh, the Pishchan Pishchananka River. So, uh, which is why the way is how I map it. Uh, uh, that the Russians are just traveling in the northern part of the river, over into the Kolesnikivka. Uh, so, anyway, we shall continue to monitor the situation. Uh, the this area is also collapsing. Yeah, a lot of collapse. Uh, over in Kupians, uh, Kupians Run, Russian forces are still fighting in the region of Kindrashivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. I have no idea how to interpret this because this is across the 
across the austere river how do you have fighting around this area did the russian cross the river uh we do not have any ideas at this moment so there's fighting reported in the Sinkivka region and in the area of Petropalivka. So that's all from the Kupians front. And we move into the Kaki front. At the Kaki front, uh, we have the usual fighting is reported at first chance. There's fighting reported at Ternova, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Then they also attack uh, in Milove, uh, far, far away from the, the rest of the front line. So probably just harassment. Uh, yeah. No. So that's all. Uh pretty perverted from the Russian side, uh, keep harassing you know, the Ukrainians. And uh, over in the Kursk front, at the Kursk front, uh, I have to zoom in, uh, there's way too many icons. So in the southern, southern flank, the Russian forces are still uh, pushing Pekovo, that's all. Uh, push, moving up north, the, there is fighting reporter at Budarevka. So this is uh, Sudja, the main city, town, captured by the, Russian, uh, by the Ukrainian forces. The Russians have since moved towards fighting at Bodarevka. So uh, previously they were, they were fighting in the region of uh, Ruskaya Konopelka and uh, that was quite some day ago. Uh, the last fighting was reported on the 18th. So there has been some time so the Russians probably are now pushing up and uh, they are now moving towards Suja. Uh, over moving up further north, uh, there is fighting reported in the area of Martinovka according to the in, according to Riva, uh, the pro-Russian source. So not sure what the hell is happening. They didn't go into details. Nothing at the northern flank. Over in the western flank, uh, this area continued to be pre pretty, pretty stalemate-ish. Uh, fighting is reported at Novo Ivanovka, Zeleny Shai, Lyubimovka, Nizinklin, Darino, and Nikolaevo Darino. And you can see the Ukrainians did clashes, uh, counter-attack or uh, clash with the Russian forces at Nov Nikolaevo Darino, Darino, Nizinklin, Zeleny Shai, and uh, Novo Ivanovka. Basically, the entire front line is active is they are clashing endlessly and countlessly the ukrainians are focusing on curse they are not concentrating concentrating their efforts on the rest of ukraine which is bizarre uh to me um and uh there is geolocation of russian forces this is geolocated by the ukrainian side of uh uh where the russians are basically in the middle or capturing most of ivanovka so this is uh this is basically uh Russians taking most of Ivanovka. I think they are on the verge of full capture. So that's all from uh, this western flank. And uh, over at uh, the Gluskovo sector, the Russian forces are still fighting the Ukrainians over at Noviput. And uh, that's all. And uh, yeah, so this is the situation report, the, all the summary for the day of uh, 977 for the 27th of October. So thank you for watching. Press the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next update.